students i am uh, dr shikha pande assistant professor from freshman engineering department of institute of aeronautical engineering the topic of today's discussion is ecosystem it's a food chain food wave flow of energy and ecological pyramid so the content of today's uh, video lecture is uh, we will discuss about the food chain and the different tropic levels in the food chain and type of food chain type of food chain consists of two food chain like a grazing food chain detritic food chain then we will discuss about the food wave and their significance of food wave and food chain and then we will come on the ecological pyramid and the types of pyramid like a pyramid of number pyramid of biomass pyramid of energy then flow of energy and the types of energy flow model today's discussion is all about the function of the ecosystem whatever whatever it is related with the species and their their function to the ecosystem so first we'll start with the food chain food chain is a process of transfer of food from one organism to a series of different organism this is the basically meaning of a food chain and food chain always starts with a plant life and end with a animal life plant life means the producer it always start with a producer that will produce energy thus a food chain is a model that shows the flow of energy from autotroph to a series of, of organism in an environment autotroph is a producer that means producer means like a those who can make their own food by the use of sunlight so they are the green plant they will make available the sun energy to other different organism to to next their tropic level first first the green plant will make their food then it will pass through the next tropic level then it, it will pass through the next tropic level then it will goes to a snake and the snake is finally eaten by the vulture so we are we are showing in this food chain is that who who its home like green plant is eaten by insects insects is eaten by frog frog can be eaten by snake snake is eaten by the vulture that is the normal food chain that is the basic concept of a food chain how food chain starts and how it ends so now we will discuss about the tropic level what is what are different tropic level in a in a food chain so first of all tropic level is divided into three parts first is producer consumer and decomposer producer is nothing but but the, those who are producing the energy like the green plant green plant that will make their own food by the help of sunlight and they will provide this energy for the next tropic level so and the next tropic level after food um, producer consumer is there and consumer is again divided into four part like primary consumer secondary tertiary and quaternary quaternary consumer and then they will uh, they will make available it to the decomposer decomposer will decompose all these energy and they will make again into the environment like and they they will again start the process of producer consumer and decomposer so producer we call them as first tropic level first tropic level is are the producer and they are the green plants and the second tropic level are the primary consumer primary consumer means the herbivores herbivores are those who can eat only herbs like they will eat only green plants like a rabbit and insects so this is they are called as herbivores and they are primary consumer like this secondary tropic third tropic level is a secondary consumer secondary consumer are called as carnivores carnivores means those animal that can feed on a different animal that will not feed on, that will not feed on the on the plants that will feed an organism like frog frog will feed some insects like uh, spider and fish fish will eat some small fish so they comes at third tropic level and third tropic level are also called as secondary consumer and carnivores carnivores are those animal that will eat herbivores and herbivores are nothing but the, those animal that will eat green plants so be, after carnivores the fourth tropic level is a secondary carnivores secondary carnivores are called as tertiary consumer tertiary consumer are those who can eat carnivores as well as herbivores so they are the secondary carnivores they can eat the herbivores and carnivores so and the, after that four tropic level was predator is there they are on the top of the tropic level they will eat everything like uh, they, they are like a lion and vulture they, they will eat everything they they can eat all these organism so this is a basic 
trophic level of a a normal ecosystem that will follow in every ecosystem and it is different for every every ecosystem for grassland ecosystem is different for pond ecosystem it is different for uh, for uh, ocean ecosystem is different we will discuss about all these trophic level in the coming slide in detail for for each and every in in terms of their respect, respective ecosystem these these example is a normal grassland ecosystem this is an example of a normal grassland ecosystem like vulture secondary consumer carnivores herbivores green plants so how this it is also a also a representation of how energy passing from lower level to higher level and the decomposer will again make them provide to the environment from decomposer they will again come to the green plant and green plant again provide this energy to the uh, their respective trophic level so this is it is a very important part of an ecosystem in an ecosystem we understand that to keep how energy is passing from one level to another level this is the main thing of this tropic level and that's why it is uh, representing in a in a triangle manner because the producers are more than consumers than herbivores and carnivores secondary carnivores and predator to and, and then decomposers decomposer will decompose all the all the energy and they will decompose those uh, decaying material and they will free up spaces of the ecosystem also and they will make them provide to again to the ecosystem this is the main thing of this tropic level so now in this slide we will going to discuss about the types of food chain in this slide we have discussed about the tropic level in a food chain now come to the types of food chain like we are basically in the ecosystem two type of food chain is there grazing food chain and detritus food chain grazing food chain is all nothing but that food chain which starts with a green plant and detritus food chain is the food chain that start with a dead organism like a dead leaf or anything and the in microorganism will make in energy will make their available nutrients for to the environment and they will they will again bring it back to the environment that that is detritus food chain and the grazing food grazing food chain is also lastly connected with a decomposer because decomposer decompose dead and decaying material and dead and decaying material and it will bring all these things to the environment so now now we will discuss in detail about the grazing food chain grazing food chain is a food chain that starts with a green plant and end to carnivores by passing through herbivores see in the example you can see that producer first all tropic level is there like a first is producer then primary consumer then secondary consumer then tertiary consumer food chain starts with a producer and it they will pass energy to the consumer then secondary consumer then tertiary consumer this is the example of a normal grazing food chain and the example of the normal grazing food chain in a grassland ecosystem is the phytoplankton in, in a pond ecosystem is a phytoplankton zooplankton and small fish and tuna fish like phytoplankton is the producer and zooplankton is the consumer and the small fish are is again the con secondary consumer and tuna fish is the tertiary consumer they will eat everything so whom eat whom so phytoplankton make energy and make it available for the zooplankton and zooplankton make all the energy available to the small fish the small fish eats zooplankton tuna eats small fish zooplankton and phytoplankton all like this phytoplankton zooplankton fish and man fish is eaten by man first of all phytoplankton will make food and they will make them available to the zooplankton zooplankton is eaten by fish fish is eaten by man this is the example of a pond ecosystem now comes to the grassland ecosystem in a grassland ecosystem first is a grass that is a green plant that will that will make available to the sunlight that will make energy food from the sunlight with the help of sunlight and they will provide these biochemical these light energy to the next tropic level that is rabbit and rabbit is eaten by fox fox is eaten by tiger tiger is the top top predator in this grassland ecosystem so and now we can also see that there is a decomposers also if something is dead at at a producer level at a consumer level at a secondary consumer level or at a tertiary consumer level decomposer will decompose all these uh, all these uh, decaying material and they will make available to important energy again to the environment that is the role of a decomposer and decomposer in is in present in the every food chain so now comes to the detritus food chain detritus food chain starts from dead organic matter of decaying animal and plant bodies to the microorganism and to, and then to detritus feeding organism and to other predators the example of the detritus food chain is the leaves or a dead plant some 
see if a leaf or a dead plant is there that is eaten by the soil mites and soil mites can be eaten by insect insect can be eaten by birds so in the detritus food chain three words is there first is detritus decomposer and nutrients so detritus is a waste material see in the picture you can see that detritus is a waste material and a rotting remain of a dead organism that is a waste material of an organism that that is called as detritus and then decomposer are there decomposer are the organisms decomposer are the organism that it detritus and break it down into the nutrients so they the, the their hair you can see the role of a decomposer like they eat the detritus and break it down into the nutrient and the nutrient are the substance that are needed for the organism growth and repair and they again they will make available these nutrients to the environment and it is used by the grass and grasshopper frog snake eagle they will use this energy into the green plant and the again the process starts again the process starts so we can say that detritus food chain and uh, and green and grazing food chain are mostly connected with each other like detritus they will make available all the decaying material into the environment again into the ecosystem again and that that energy is used by different different tropic labor so we can see, see see that the first one is the grass grass is the producer grass is using this grass is a use is the producer and then three and, and the consumers are there so those important nutrients the de decomposer will, will bring back to the environment and that will used by the different different animals this is the main concept of the detritus food chain it is the food chain it starts with a dead organic matter and animal plant will to the microorganism these microorganism will decay will will decompose all the detritus organism and then they will make available into the nutrients and these nutrients is used in again in the environment this is the important part of a detritus food chain detritus food chain is a very significance in the ecosystem because they will free up the spaces of uh, organisms also they will they will just break break down into the nutrients so they will make the spaces free up also they'll rotting remains of a dead organism now come to the food wave food wave is nothing but a network of food chain it is like a lots of food chain which are interconnected at various trophic level to form a number of feeding connection among different organism of a biotic community is called as food wave food wave is a lots of food food chain here you can see that lots of food chain is there like like green green all green plant or producer are there in the in the base so all all food chain starts with a with a producer you can see green plants like like mango is eaten by fruit fly fruit fly is eaten by dragon dragon fly dragon fly can be eaten by thrush and the dragon fly can be eaten by frog and frog can be eaten by a python eaten by a python or a frog frog will eat grasshopper and gra grass will again grasshopper will take food from from a green plant so this is a, a food wave this is a food wave that is a connection of different organism in an ecosystem you can see that all organisms are interconnected at a various trophic level to form a number of feeding connection and they are forming different feeding connection at the different trophic level and the feeding connection among different organism of a biotic community this this is like you can see that eagle frog can be directly eaten by eagle also the food chain will only represent the feeding connection of an organism into a into a trophic level this is the basic thing of a food wave now we, we will discuss about the significance of food chain and food wave the knowledge of food chain helps in understanding the feeding relationship as well as the interaction between organism and ecosystem like we from the food chain we are going to understand the relationship and the and the interconnection between an organism and their trophic level and it is a interaction between organism and ecosystem and they are interdependent by food chain and by studying food chain and food wave we comes to know that who which organism is interdependent and those organ which organism are interacting with each other and it also helps in understanding the mechanism of energy flow and circulation of material in an ecosystem 
nutrient cycling is a very important function of an ecosystem like nutrient cycling is is the, again the thing that the nutrient will make available again in the environment that is called as nutrient cycle so they from by studying this food chain of a particular ecosystem and a food web of a particular ecosystem we come to know and know about the energy flow and the circulation of matter in the in the that ecosystem it also helps to understand the movement of toxic substances and the problem associated with biological magnification in an ecosystem biological magnification is a term used to used to show that the 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 toxic substances which are which are transferring from lower level to higher level so from food chain we can we can come to know the movement of that particular toxic substance how much amount of that particular toxic substance is is transferring from lower level to higher level how much magnification is there from lower level to higher level in a particular ecosystem and the food chain also help in maintaining and regulating the population size of different animal and thus helps maintain the ecological balance so the the there are four important part of this food chain first one is the feeding relationship feeding relationship between all organism second one is a nutrient cycling cycling of nutrient they will again again make available the nutrient to the food chain and the third one is from biological magnification we comes to know about the magnification of a particular toxic substance into the ecosystem again and and third fourth point is the ecological balance food chain help in maintaining and regulating the population size and that, that will help in in the stabilization of ecology so that will help in the ecological balance of any particular ecosystem now we will come to come on the slides of ecological pyramid in the in this in this video in this uh, classes we will discuss about the ecological pyramid also ecological pyramid is again a very important function of an ecosystem it is nothing but a graphical representation of an tropic level into a particular environment on the basis of their population on the basis of total mass of organism on the basis of energy so in an ecological pyramid the huge number of tiny individual forms at the base and few large animals or uh, individual occupy the top of or apex in the form this formation is known as ecological pyramid it comes like a triangle space in the base some tiny individual is present at the base and the in the high level some few large orga organisms are there and the, on the apex on the top of the triangle uh, some predator is there this is it is the only the representation of individual in the form of a triangle in the form of a pyramid so we call it as a ecological pyramid so all producer micro and macro plant micro and micro plant belong to first tropic level belong to first tropic level that is tropic level 1 and all primary cons consumer belongs to belongs to second tropic level and the organism feeding on these two belongs to the the top of the top of the pyramid so they are called as third tropic level and there are three type of ecological pyramid that can be usually distinguished namely first the pyramid of number it is showing it is dividing it is dividing the pyramid on the basis of number of an individual now or number of an in individual and it it reflects the population of all, how many population is there of that particular species in the in, in a ecosystem and the pyramid of biomass pyramid of biomass is is divided on the basis of the total mass of the organism and pyramid of energy is the is the pyramid that will make depends upon the energy of available to the ecosystem of by that organism showing the and it basically shows the energy flow in the pyramid or in the ecosystem so now we we'll discuss about the pyramid of number pyramid of number is a graphical representation of number of individual per unit area of various tropic level it is only the graphical representation of number of individuals per unit area number of individual per unit area of a various tropic level so in the lower they are like a producers and the and the upper part is herbivores carnivores according to that we have divided it so large number of producer in all the pyramid in the all the all the 
for all types of pyramid large number of producer tend to form the base and lower number are formed to occupy the tip of the pyramid so in a grassland for example if you will take the example of a grassland ecosystem then it, it is like a grass first is the grass grass is at the lower level of the pyramid and they are more in number also we are studying this is the type of pyramid of number see so if a grass grasses is more in number so grasses will occupy the lower base lower base and then grasshopper grasshopper is basically the lower in number than grasses so it will it will uh, occupy the next tropic level and then frogs are there they will take the next tropic level then peacocks and hawks that will eat all of them this is the example of a grassland ecosystem a grassland ecosystem a pyramid of number of a grassland ecosystem like this in this picture you can see that this is the example of a pond ecosystem pond ecosystem and how it is placed according to their number so first one is the phytoplankton phytoplankton are the lower level that that, that are the producer so they are at the lower level then the zooplankton and fishes are there at the the next tropic level then some fishes are there then then crane is there so it, a crane is that predator for that particular ecosystem so all these for for in case of uh, grassland ecosystem in case of pond ecosystem this is uh, this is the shape this is the shape of the pyramid so it is it is in the form of pyramid so we, this is the example of pyramid of number pyramid of number in case of grassland and pond and it is always upright manner like this this diagram diagram is there and we call this as the upright upright the shape is always upright in case of pyramid of number for grassland and in a pond ecosystem like this the second picture you can see that you can see that this is inverted pyramid inverted pyramid and it is the pyramid of number in case of a forest in case of a forest ecosystem it is something different than the pond ecosystem and grassland ecosystem like this first is the the pyramid of number and the first their producer are the tree so tree is less than the birds obviously tree is less than the tree will occupy will, uh, tree, number of trees is obviously less than the birds so tree is this shape is like this inverted pyramid is for pyramid of number in case of forest ecosystem tree and then second and then next tropic level are the birds or deers and then next tropic level are the parasite and the hyperparasite all these the according to the number of the population of that particular species they are they are more so they, their shape is something different like inverted pyramid their their its shape is like in, in the form of inverted pyramid like this in the second picture you can also see that it is a pyramid of upright upright pyramid pyramid of number this is also in case of uh, in case of uh, forest ecosystem it is some exception is there pyramid of number in case of forest ecosystem is something different for uh, to uh, for the uh forest ecosystem so in the second picture you can see that first one is tree then birds then eagle eagle is again uh, eagle is the carnivores and eagle is again less in number so the structure is like that it is like a inverted upright pyramid pyramid of number so inverted pyramid carnivores is a is the vulture and the herbivores is the birds and producer is the tree so its shape is like that so there is a exception in case of forest ecosystem for pyramid of number and uh, pyramid is always upright for for pyramid of number in case of grassland and in case of pond but for pyramid of number for forest ecosystem it's inverted or sometime it is upright so this is the basic and from pyramid of number we only comes to we only understand about the how population of a particular species in that ecosystem so it it only divided on the on the population how many many population is there for that particular species in that ecosystem now come to the pyramid of biomass it is the graphical representation of biomass presents per unit area at different tropic level with producers at the base and carnivores at the top so it is graphically represents the biomass present per unit area like this what what whatever the biomass that this particular species is occupying it is at the base of that that uh, pyramid so they, they will make the base of the pyramid so producer are at the base and carnivores at the top these this pattern will be follow from everywhere but 
सो विल स्टडीज अबाउट द सेप ऑफ पिरामिड इन केस ऑफ बायोमास सो पिरामिड मे बी अपराइट फॉर ग्रास लैंड इन इन्वर्टेड फॉर पॉन्ड इको सिस्टम सो द पिरामिड ऑफ बायोमास इन केस ऑफ टेरिस्ट्रियल इको सिस्टम और अ ग्रास लैंड इको सिस्टम इज ऑलवेज अपराइट यू कैन सी इन द पिक्चर लाइक they they the producer will occupy this the lower lower part of the pyramid and they are the they are the trees and all these things and the herbivores on the second level they are the rabbit and deer and all the so primary carnivores are fox they will they will occupy next topic level and the top carnivores is tiger they will apply they they will take the apex of the pyramid so the if if we we are talking about the biomass of that particular species is is taking so it like this 1000 kg is for it is an all, only the representation of that but that uh, organism so like 1000 kg and they will again uh, again reduce to 100 kg reduce to 10 kg reduce to 1 kg so for in for the bio pyramid of the shape of the pyramid of biomass in case of a terrestrial ecosystem is always upright top cani versus tiger tiger is uh, weight is like uh, 1 kg so whatever weight it is putting on the ecosystem it will reduce so this is the pyramid of biomass and the vegetation growth produces a biomass of 1000 kg out of this 100 kg of biomass for herbivores which in turn only 10 kg of biomass for primary carnivores that give rise 1 kg of biomass for second second order carnivores and say on so on and the inverted and the, this this is inverted in case of pond ecosystem inverted in case of pond ecosystem because the whale whale is the main carnivore main predator of that pond ecosystem is a small fishes the producers are always the phytoplankton are always the the producer of an aquatic ecosystem and then herbivores are the small fishes a small fishes is low in biomass and the carnivores that is the top of the top of their food chain is is whale whale and the biomass of whale is too much than the all these organisms so it is always inverted in case of aquatic ecosystem for example if small fishes and phytoplankton are occupying the waste waste of biomass of 4 g then the fishes is having the biomass of 8 g then the whale is having the weight of 12 g per meter square so it is again there is again exception in case of pyramid of biomass in case of pond ecosystem it is inverted it is always inverted pyramid of biomass is always inverted in case of aquatic ecosystem but it is always upright in case of terrestrial ecosystem or in case of grassland ecosystem so this is only about the, this will give the information only about the population of that particular species now come to the pyramid of energy pyramid of energy is based on total energy present in each tropic level the energy is transferred from base toward apex of the pyramid energy they will make available all this energy from base to the apex of the pyramid at each successive tropic level there is a huge loss of energy in the form of heat respiration thus at each next higher level only 10% of the energy passes on and the energy is expressed in case of in the calorie per unit area per year so you can see that there is a uh, some energy from sunlight and they will a producer will make available 10000 joule of the energy and they will they will pass it to the only 90% energy they will reduce in 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 their in their respiration their locomotion and their uh, all this function and thousand energy and they again 90% of energy will reduce reduced and the 100 joule of energy will make available for the second break consumer and then they will make available 10 joule of energy for the tertiary consumer so pyramid of energy is always upright in case of every ecosystem in case of every because some energy is losing all organism are losing some of the energy in case it for their heat and respiration for their locomotion or all this function so it it is uh, we can say that energy of pyramid is always upright for all the ecosystem and the pyramid energy is transferred the see the energy is transferred from producer to the tertiary consumer producer has more energy but at every at every stage it stays it is going to be reduced 
by the 90% that is the main this is the main main function of an ecosystem by this pyramid of energy we are we are coming up where it is connected with the flow of energy in an ecosystem like food wave food chain all these things are connected with this pyramid of energy and we can we, we have also studied that energy energy is passed from the one level to the one tropic level to the next tropic level this is called pyramid of energy now come to the energy flow the energy flow in an ecosystem energy flow in an ecosystem is basically depend upon the two law of thermodynamics the first law of thermodynamics says that energy can neither be created nor destroyed but it can be transferred from one form to another in ecosystem green plant transforms solar energy to biochemical energy which then travels to the next tropic level and they will do their function and the second law of thermodynamics says that energy dissipates as it is used or in other word it get converted from a more concentrated to the dispersed form so the flow of energy through various tropic level in an ecosystem can be can be explained with the three energy flow model first is universal energy flow model second is single channel energy flow model and double channel or y shaped energy flow model so from first law of thermodynamics is followed in a in a ecosystem like green plant transform solar energy to biochemical energy which then travel to the other tropic level so energy can neither be created nor be destroyed only it can it can transform transform from one form to another form so that that the role green plant is playing in an ecosystem it, like they will make uh, available the solar energy to biochemical energy which then travel to other tropic level and the second second law energy dissipates as it is used or in other word it get converted from a more concentrated to a dispersed form the both of the, these law is connected to the energy flow in an ecosystem like we have studied in the previous slide like about the flow of energy in an ecosystem flow of energy like pyramid of energy so we, here we can see that energy can be make available by the food by the producer and they will make available it to next 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 tropic level so it it transform from one form to another form form it, like green plant will transform solar energy to biochemical energy which then tra travel to other tropic level this is the first law of th thermodynamics and it is following in a normal food chain process they will make provide this solar energy for the biochemical energy for next 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 tropic level and the energy can be dissipated like more energy is it in then then they will provide it in the dispersed form and the energy flow model there are three energy flow model of the ecosystem first one is the universal energy flow model then single channel energy flow model then double channel or y shaped energy flow model we will discuss about all these energy flow model in the coming slide like how it is connected with the ecosystem and what is their significance in an ecosystem now let's start with the universal energy flow model universal energy flow model takes place takes place there is a gradual loss of energy at each level thereby resulting in less energy available at the next tropic level see we can it is start with the ingestion like the input of energy to the organism and then they will make available it to to the next tropic level that is like assimilation they are using this energy for the assimilation some of the energy is reduced in the form of excretion so after assimilation some of the energy is also reduced in the form of respiration then the the production of energy is used by an organism for the growth storage and reproduction all this function whatever they are doing this is the green color represent the biomass of that particular species in an ecosystem and the there is a so in this picture we can show that we, you can see that there is a some energy is losing at every every steps in the form of their function of that particular organisms in the environment and there is a energy law that energy is lost in locomotion excretion or the energy loss in respiration which is for maintenance the remaining energy is used for production then they whatever energy is left they will use it for the production and then their their activity and then they will make provide this energy for the next tropic level this is the universal energy flow model that is the base of an ecosystem like um, some energy will will use by organism some organism is doing some function they are losing some en uh, energy and then they will again provide this energy to the next tropic level 
that is the basic of the energy that's why this is called as universal energy flow model and this energy flow model is again divided into two or three types no not divided it is some other flow model is also there for the according to the ecosystem energy flow in the ecosystem so this is this is like single channel energy flow model here the energy flow takes place in a unidirectional manner through a single channel of producer to herbivores to a carnivores like this is as the name suggests that suggests that single channel energy flow model the energy will flow in the form in a, in a single channel model see it is starts from the solar energy to the producer then primary consumer then secondary consumer then tertiary consumer so it is um, energy is flowing in a single channel model the energy once travel by a lower tropic level to higher tropic level cannot be returned back to the lower tropic level and the perfect example of this single channel energy flow model is the grazing food chain grazing food chain what it starts with a solar energy it starts with a producer and producer will make food by the help by the process of photosynthesis and they will provide this energy to their next tropic level for their herbivores and then herbivores provide all their energy to the carnivores and the carnivores will provide all the energy to tertiary carnivores from solar energy in already 90% energy is lost in the solar energy producer will take only 10% of energy and they they will again lose some energy in the in the process of in, in their activities so energy lost as heat due to metabolic reaction metabolic activity whatever that organism in playing in that 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 ecosystem is lost in the form of energy there some organism are doing excretion respiration heat all these their activities so in this activity they will they will consume some energy and they will provide only 10% of the energy to their next tropic level primary consumers are herbivores herbivores the is the very less energy they will transfer to the next carnivores and the minimal transfer of energy very less transfer of energy is there at the top carnivores top uh, means only 10% energy they will provide to the uh, carnivores this is the basic uh, single channel energy flow model it is in always in the single channel model that's why it is called as single channel energy model and this model reflects that once our energy will travel to the higher level it cannot be returned to the lower level and the example is the grazing food chain now come to the next slide y shaped energy flow model y shaped energy flow model y shaped energy flow model it indicates that the two food, food chain namely that is grazing food chain and detritus food chain are in fact under natural condition not completely isolated from one another and the grazing food chain beginning with green plants base going to herbivores and the detritus food chain beginning with the dead organic matter acted by microbes then passing to detritus detritivores and their consumers like y shaped energy flow model is the interconnection of both the food chain first one is grazing food chain and and detritus food chain in a normal condition in the natural condition like we have studies from many times like decomposer will make a material take to the plant as nutrient then these these plant these uh, or nutrients they will again make provide for the producer and producer will again make energy for the herbivores so we can say that both of the energy flow model are interconnected y shaped energy in in the form of so it is forming a a base like y shape that's why it is called as y shaped energy flow model they are interconnected with each other so first like this so first producer first one is the producer and producer producer will make available the food to the herbivores and then top top predator this is the grazing portion and lower level is the detritus portion like producer will make available it for the decomposer decomposer will make available for the predator and herbivores is connected to the predator also and top predator is also connected with the decomposer producer is connected with the decomposer also here again we can see that decomposed material taken up by plant as nutrient and then, then producer is using sunlight to make their food and then it it make available to the herbivores then top carnivores and this is the first one is the grazing portion second one is the detritus portion and these and both of the portion are interconnected with each other so this flow of energy model is called as y shaped energy flow model and it indicates the two food chain that is and it is on 
natural condition of an ecosystem that are not isolated from each other. And in this way, we can also say that the both of the food chain are interconnected with each other because the detritus food chain beginning with the dead organic matter and then passing into detritus food and their consumers. Like this, grazing food chain is beginning with the green plants and then going to herbivores and detritus food chain. This is the basic concept of the bicept energy flow model. It is the interconnection of the both the food chain and they will make available it for the next topic level. Now the Y-shaped energy, what is the significance of this Y-shaped energy flow model? This model is more realistic and practical working model than the single chain channel model because it confirms to stratified structure of an ecosystem and it separates the grazing and detritus chain directly consumption of living plants and utilization of dead organic matter respectively in both time and space that the microorganism absorptive bacteria and fungi and the macro consumer that is phagotrophic animal differ greatly size metabolism relation. So this is the main uh, significance of this Y-shaped energy flow model. It shows that the both is stratified structure of an ecosystem and the, it separates the grazing and detritus food chain in both time and space and the, the, the microorganism that is a some bacteria and fungi is there and the macro consumer will differ greatly size metabolism relation. This is the basic concept of a Y-shaped energy flow model and Y-shaped energy flow model is the main energy flow model for the ecosystem that is both the both the food chain is connected with each other and it, it confirms the stratified structure of the ecosystem. So this is the Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.